ABP Live. I have with me today Nobel Laureate Professor Mohammad Yunus. And we know that, you know, he's been the founder of Grameen Bank. He's popularly known as the banker to the poor. Today, we are going to understand from him as to what really has happened in Bangladesh, what's next for the future. And of course, for countries like India, which is the immediate neighbor and also seen as a partner country, what is expected from New Delhi? All that and more, we are going to speak to uh, Professor Yunus, who's, who's connecting with us all the way from Paris. Welcome to ABP Life, sir, and thank you so much for your time. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you, sir. So uh, we know that the crisis sort of uh, is unfolding in Bangladesh. We know that, uh, you know, we can call her former prime minister, Sheikh Hasina. She's left the country. She's uh, come to India. And, uh, you know, for all you know, she can be going to London. That's not clear. But uh, just to understand from you, we know that the country is now under army control and we've heard the army chief has said that there'll be an interim government. But to understand from you, uh, are we back to where things were way back in 2007, when again a caretaker government had come in, of course, backed by the army? If that is the situation today, uh, when things have really changed, even geopolitically, how do you see uh, Bangladesh coming out of this crisis? Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm seeing it in a different way. I'm seeing it. We had the <clears throat> celebration of uh, uh, liberation. Uh, on uh, 16th of December, 1971. That's a fantastic celebration that we had because we just came out of uh, Pakistani occupation and became an independent country. Today, we are having a second Liberation Day. It's a fantastic uh, celebration going all over the country. We got rid of something that we didn't want to sit around on our heads all these years. Um, and finally, we got rid of it. So that's the way people are this, uh, responding to it. Millions of people are on the street. It's all led by students. It's all started very really in a simple way. Students wanted something changed in their um, quota for the government jobs. Uh, simple demand, but the way mistreated, mishandled by the government, uh, by attacking them, beating them, shooting them, uh, it grew bigger and bigger. She, uh, the Prime Minister brought in police after police to handle them. Uh, sound grenades was thrown at them. Bullets were thrown at them. People died in the process and it became bigger. He brought the um, border guards to his control. Again, it became bigger. People, many people killed. And then he brought the army and the curfew. So it went on and on with the support and encouragement of the government to make it happen. Ultimately, it became so big and the demand becomes simple now, not a quota. Resign. You are the one that this created all this mess. So you resign and go. And finally, she had to resign and go. Mm -hmm. uh, sir, also, I know the immediate trigger is the is the job quota, you know, the kind of uh, uh, quotas that were coming in. And then the government tried to pacify. But we've been really watching this unfolding for a very long time. Uh, you know, we also saw in January how the court case went went against you. And even before that, the way uh, U.S. was saying that there should be a democratic process that should be followed in the January elections. Um, and the fact that there was always this kind of uh, tussle between U.S. and China and, of course, India in between. And she was anyway getting uh, a little unpopular within the government, uh, within the country as well. Why do you think that, and when do you think that really started? Because of uh, misrule, misgovernment, taking away the political right, democracy completely denied. People couldn't vote in election, but she got elected by fake elections one after another. And these young people who are in a population of 170 million people, they are two thirds of the population, all these young people. Mm -hmm. They could never vote in any election. Uh, many of them had crossed three time, times of uh, parliament, but never had the uh, election to vote for. So this is the denial of the possibility of uh, expressing yourself in the elective process, in the democratic process, and suppressing your views and things like that, um, defying everybody. She became uh, one country, one leader, one narrative, uh, everything revolves around her. She is the only person in the whole country. So this is a and corrupt, filled the corruption everywhere. So this is how ultimately small thing get a spark 
and this big volcanic eruption has taken place. Mm -hmm. But what we were given to understand is that the the uh, opposition for this will be the coming in of Jamaat, which is something was concerning not just for the US or, you know, maybe not for the US, but for India. So what could have been the solution? I mean, what I meant to say is that uh, was it a credible opposition too? Because we saw what's been uh, happening to the BNP too. Uh, I mean, you can really correct me, but what was the alternative really? The, democracy is a very funny thing. You allow everybody to participate as long as he or she is not violating the law. So whether it's a Jamaat, whether it's a PNP, they are citizens of the country. They want to participate in election. They have the chance to participate in a legal way. Uh, they, they are not getting the chance. You're blaming them for this, blaming for that, make up all kinds of stories. Uh, the, uh, the government has become a kind of a factory of lie making. Uh, people see that through, that you do that. It become such a common feature of how, how the government behave in a situation. So they were denied uh, participation. You blame them for this or so. If Trump can run in a presidential election, he says things, obnoxious things, but nobody says, oh, he should, should be denied to the right to uh, run in the election. Nobody says that this is his right. Whether people like it or not, it's up to the people to decide. You didn't get give any chance to people to decide whether they like Jamaat or not. You decided Jamaat is no good. That's the problem. You have to get back to the democratic process. Give them the freedom, every single citizen's freedom to express themselves, form their own political party, express themselves, as long as they follow, the, don't violate the law. Mm -hmm. So, but then uh, now uh, to understand from you, Professor, what's next? I mean, we are going to see another uh, army-backed caretaker government. Do you think that will be able to bring any kind of stability? And also, I'm asking this because uh, you are aware the kind of, uh, you know, uh, backlash or, you know, the, the tensions India is facing in its borders also. People are trying to cross over and, you know, there are these tensions that the you, you can read the statements from the Border Security Force, the BS the, the kind of problems they are facing. But even then, we were seeing that Bangladesh GDP growth was rising and all that. Do you think now with this kind of setup that will come in, as the army chief has said, that there'll be no emergency, an interim government, a caretaker government will be coming in? How long will that be able to continue unless, uh, you know, until that time stability comes in, in, in Dhaka? The way I've been uh, positioning myself and telling people, uh, and all this chaos and a um, kind of balance uh, that demonstrations and killing, the only solution is democracy. Go back to democracy. You cannot solve political problem by guns. You cannot solve the, the political problem by accusing people and putting them into jail for fake things like that. Uh, so we have to get back to democracy and election. So today, that's a open the door for opening the thing that uh, we need the elections coming. Uh, the students led the way because uh, she will not give any election or election in a fake way. Um, nobody was convinced by the uh, opportunity they were offered. So this is how uh, all the problems begin. So I would say that uh, let's go back to the election process. And uh, now she has resigned. The election has to take place. And a normal way that we have a procedure called caretaker government. It was put in the constitution to the demands of Amalek and they succeeded in uh, having the caretaker government in the constitution. But as soon as she was elected, Amalek was elected to the government and they scattered. So let's put back because everybody likes that. That's, this is the way to solve the problem of uh, manipulation of the government, uh, manipulation of the election. So this probably, this would be my appeal to the country that please put back this uh, uh, caretaker government and hold a fair and transparent election so that nobody doubts, everybody has a, a kind of celebratory mood to go to the polling booth, casting their vote and feel happy to, for their candidate, hoping their candidate will win, watch the television and counting the numbers and so on because you are part of that process. That process disappeared. Young people don't know how his election is held. They have not seen an election in their life.
Mm -hmm. And Professor, how would you see to some of the commentary that's also coming in from various quarters uh, within India and also outside is uh, they're not ruling out um, a CIA's hand in it or maybe an ISI hand in whatever has happened. How would you like to address those kind of commentary that's coming in? Well, in a situation like that, everybody blames everybody else. If some people talk about CIA, somebody talks about something else, somebody talks about raw from India. Uh, so Chinese agents and so on. So that's their game. That's how you play that game. Uh, somebody is doing it because you don't like it. So you say it's raw is doing it. Somebody is doing something you don't like. It's a CIA operator. Those kind mm -hmm. of things. Mm -hmm. But but why so much of anarchy? I mean, this is not the first time, of course, Bangladesh is seeing this kind of protests. And it has always, you know, been a kind of country which, you know, where people have really risen uh, whenever times have come, uh, you know, whenever the need be. But this kind of uh, anarchy is sort of unprecedented. Would you agree to that? Or do you think the frustration of the pent up anger uh, within people was so much that, you know, that sort of exploded? You said it. That's what the whole reason. You took away election. You took away right to speak out, uh, right to express themselves. They don't know. You are sitting there. You don't want to quit. Uh, you have every way to manipulate the election. And uh, unfortunately, India has been supporting that. And that's why people are angry with India, that you have taken away, help the person who's taking away all our rights. You are supporting her. So they become angry with the country which is supporting her. So they think all these things are done by wrong. Or the thing that has been happening and so on. So you blame those people. The real issue is, is it bring back the democracy so that people have no grudge uh, the decision of the government because we selected the government. We voted for the election. We voted for the persons who were in there. Today, they were not voted. They just picked up at random. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know, you were talking about India's role and, you know, also the commentary that, you know, Raw's hand could be in this. But um, officially, how do you see India's reaction to all these months, uh, you know, when the unrest was sort of building up and, and even now when the crisis has really unraveled? Uh, we've not seen really official statements coming out from India, but do you think that this is the time really for New Delhi to stand beside the people and understand, uh, you know, what is it that Bangladeshis really want? Yeah, I was uh, very shocked. I was very hurt when India said, no, this is internal matter. We can't do anything about it. I said, mm -hmm. come on, you come and participate in our election. And today people are demonstrating on the street and they are being shot dead, you have no role to play in tunnel. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we have been uh, doing this uh, with the young people and uh, uh, appealing to the whole world that uh, innocent young people from Bangladesh are being shot by their own government. Please help us. And India said this is internal matter. Uh, so this is what uh, made people angry that India didn't do the thing, right thing to do rather than stay away. I said, if your neighbor's house is burning, is in fire, you can't say this is their internal affair. You say, oh, don't do that. This is going to hurt us. You're going to hurt you and it's going to hurt us. Because if Bangladesh becomes in a total mess in violation, uh, in violence and everything, it will spill over all over your borders. You cannot stop it. I'm, I'm glad ben ben Mamata Banerjee picked it up. So they all open the door. Please, you can come anytime. It created a problem for her in India. But she did the right thing. Because the many people, if it did continue, many of these young people who took shelter in the eastern regions and in, in the western borders of Bangladesh. And it will spill over to those people. And it will create more problems for everybody. But India didn't do that. India wanted to support only one person. And you think India had a role in the last elections also? Absolutely, yes. They made it very clear. It's, a, it's not a high, hidden thing. They made press statements. And India always the first country to congratulate her, present her bouquet. Mm -hmm. Always the first one. Okay, fair enough. Also, Professor, I wanted to understand from you, uh, you know, since the time you left the country and, uh, you know, you also probably at one time wanted to float your own political party. Uh, do you think that now probably charges against you would be dropped and you will be able to I come have, back to your country? I have no idea. I have no idea what will happen because it's, it's just started a new regime, new country, new country, right? 
would you like to lead the new uh, the the interim setup that the government that the army is planning to organize uh, i i've heard that non political uh, personalities will be heading the group uh, would you like to be uh, would you like to participate or you know be the take the leadership role in that i would try to be as mild savvy as possible from those things i'm not a politician i don't want to get involved with politics so i have done it before also when i was invited to become the head of the government i said i'm not a politician i'm not fit for that kind of job i do things for people and i know how to do that and i love that and i work with people some people like it some people dislike it uh, but i don't mind uh, my work goes on like that but this is a completely new territory i, I don't want to get involved with that Mm-hmm. uh sir and my last question to you i know this is a very difficult time for bangladesh but you know over the years in the last 10 years or maybe before but especially now that you know there is uh, the world is facing two multiple wars rather to say bangladesh has a very uh, unique crucial and strategic location in the bay of bengal uh, you know it's not just india it's china it's us everybody is interested in that country so do you think that you know this crisis needs to be resolved as soon as possible before things really go out of control and bangladesh goes into this you know in 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 a dark era because you know we've seen how uh, sort of a, a sri lanka has managed we've seen what has again happened with afghanistan so you know there are several examples within india's neighborhood but bangladesh has been this bright spot you know uh, with economic growth and everything do you think this crisis really needs to be resolved uh, which is going to be acceptable to the people and that needs to really come soon my comments on that is uh, countries which have lots of weapons lots of money lots of destructive power they're just itching to get into war find some excuse to get into war so they are the ones who is creating all these problems uh, countries with the lots of defense expenditure and so on i said if we wanted peace that's what we talk about all the time peace peace we have the united nations peace and other initiatives in peace i said if you wanted peace we are reflected in our actions we don't reflect it now you have a war ministry you call it defense ministry you have the largest amount of allocation in your budget for the defense ministry and you spend a lot of money to design and make it efficient to kill people uh, you have a you have a war industry you have war technology make it more sharp more quick more uh, people there this is where you devoted your money and talent and creativity if you want peace where is the peace ministry you should be having peace ministry in every single government and their job is to how to protect peace how to bring peace and they will be negotiating with the war ministry please cool down you we ha- we can do the peace here so it's our mind it's not but who does what it we our mind is completely kind of way design we are always looking for an opportunity for getting into war so i would say that it, it we have to start from here we have to create in, institutions we have to create policies so that our peace has a chance and uh, there's a chance i said what well, every government should have a peace ministry devoted to developing peace they will be sending their representative in every country how to build peace with them and so maybe that will help to neutralize those things so this is the way i said and there will be peace industry there's be peace technology there's no peace technology there's no peace industry so we can do that if we want peace but what do you think should be the road ahead for bangladesh in order to become a stable and this important country if bangladesh doesn't have that war industry bangladesh doesn't have those weapons doesn't have the money to spend so we'll be in favor of the peace because we by default we cannot fight any war so we will be in the peace and this is peace peace is our future we'll be inviting people when they get tense about war making we go to cool them down this is our responsibility because we get caught into the thing so that's the role bangladesh should play how to bring peace to everywhere everywhere not just in the bay of bengal globally because something happens somewhere it impacts comes on us they are fighting in ukraine and we suffer from the ukraine war so this is how things go on. Mhm mhm well thank you so much professor you know sir you. it was wonderful to talk to you and i really hope that bangladesh comes out of this crisis and i hope so i hope so uh, we need know, your support we need your support we need the support of all Indi- indian people we are together we can be the best of friends india and bangladesh we are so close to each other we believe in the things together we do things together 
So we'll, the, everything says we will be the best of friends instead of uh, turning into uh, another relationship uh, as the worst of enemies. Why should we? There's no reason to do that. So that's where our government should learn that making, putting all your thing in the one person to succeed, irrespective of what she does, is not a good policy. You should be dealing with the people of Bangladesh, not Prime Minister of Bangladesh. Please change your policy. You need it. Well, since you said that, just to, you know, before closing this, you still think that uh, Bangladesh is really now that, you know, we've seen people rising, uh, we are sensing a lot of hatred towards Indians also. Do you think that really needs to go, uh, you know, if, if, if the country has to really, uh, you know, be developed in the sense that, you know, you cannot create an acrimony with India end of the day? Sure. It, 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 doesn't, it doesn't make any sense to have any acrimony with India. India is our best friend. Why should we have trouble? India is a big country. We have many things to share with India, benefit from India. We don't want India to be our enemy. So we want to be the closest friend because that's what the nature has built us. We share things together. We enjoy things together. So let's change our policies, get together where we are going wrong. Why should we push one person to succeed and everybody else to ignore? It's a nation, not a person. Thank you. Sure. Thank you so much for talking to Thank us. You. Please Thank take. you very much.